Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome. Whether it's your first time or your fourth time, it's our fourth episode here at the Players Club, a podcast by the players for the people. And I'm your host, Darian Richard. Yo, so welcome to the show. Uh, today we'll be talking to one of my friends, Ches Malusi, my former teammate who transferred to Wisconsin. He's got a big game coming this weekend against the Notre Dame uh, in Chicago. And so it's going to be a big game. It's going to be all of everything. So we'll, we'll catch up with him in a second. And then like always, guys, I'll answer some of your questions. Literally, probably my favorite part of every weekend is answering the questions. Uh, so you guys can know a little bit about me and I can you know, we can all connect. But first, uh, just a little bit about where I'm at right now. So uh, we just finished playing a game, our first conference game against Georgia Tech. And you guys watched the game. I mean, it was national television. It, it was an ugly win. But like somebody tweeted at me, uh, this was one of the best quotes I've gotten from this weekend. Because I got a lot of bad stuff or just our team did or whatnot. But somebody said all wins are like supermodels. There's not an ugly one. And you know what? I agree with that. Maybe the college football playoffs doesn't, doesn't agree with that. But as a team, you know what? Like it's early in the season, and like we just, we we need a win. Obviously, it wasn't a pretty win. It was a fourteen and eight game. Um, our offense is still we're, we're figuring it out. Like obviously, people think we're struggling, uh, which we are. But like it's not that we. Here's the difference in my mentality. It's not that we we aren't scoring points, but I know we can score points, and so it's only a matter of time before this thing just kind of and we just take off and everything starts clicking, which I think is gonna happen this weekend. So I'm excited about that. And also this past weekend, we had a rain delay. Literally the game, so it's a 3.30 game. 3.30 games are usually, you know, like they go in at 7.30, you can eat your food and you can have do something at night that's fun. You know, you, the whole mentality is like 3.30 games, like perfect prom time. So you, it's not too early. You can watch some games before that. And after that, you got your night to yourself. You can go eat somewhere. But then uh, this rain delay just ruined everything. Um, <laughs> so so obviously it was going normal. And then we, with 32 seconds left in the half, uh, right before the halftime, they said, hey, it's a rain delay. So we go in the locker room. And I've been a part of rain delays before. It's like, all right, 20, 30 minutes, we go back on the field. And so we're in the locker room. Everybody's getting ready. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of chilling for a second. And they're like, hey, it's going to be another 30 minutes. I was like, oh, my gosh. Because 30 minutes, however, just passed. And then it was like, all right, it's going to be an hour and a half. And we're like... Bro, what? <laughs> like an hour and a half of just sitting in the locker room after you just got amped up to play a game. And so, like, people, we, we had our meetings with our coaches and, like, kind of going over our tips and reminders again, kind of get strategizing how we're going to win this game. And then it got to a point where we was like, like, bro, what you think about? Like, what, what, yeah, we, everybody started cracking jokes. Like, uh, at halftime, uh, we go to the locker room, we get Rice Krispie treats, which is, like, my favorite thing. We get Rice Krispie treats and, um, we get like the little peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, like the, um, what's the popular brand? I can't even think, like the Rutgers. It's not Rutgers. <laughs> um, you know, it's a purple, the little, the, the, the famous peanut butter and jellies, the circular ones with the little crinkle crust. Uh, we get those and uh, we get like a little Gatorade and water. So everybody's just chilling. I, I took off my shoes and after I took off my shoes, all the offense, we started taking off our shoes because it's like, bro, we're we going to be here for a little minute. So we go back out and as much as like we all want to dominate, at the end of the day, man, when it was fourth down, fourth and two, and we fumbled and then they recovered it. When I tell you, I was just ready to just get up on out of that out of that stadium. Like, like, all right, I get that we want to play well. Everybody wants us to play well, but like when you're in that moment, it's like, bro, let's just let's get this W and let's let's get up out of here. Um, and that's that's what happened. <laughs> we had a big we had a big stop. We stopped them, thank God. Um, and then we got up out of there. And people People always laugh at me at Clemson. We celebrate. We celebrate wins. Like obviously on Mondays, we're gonna correct it, which we we did. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of getting to that point. Like all right, we gotta figure this thing out. Uh, but we're gonna celebrate, man. We're gonna dance. We're gonna have fun. Like a win's a win. A dub is a dub. Um, and obviously, like it wasn't pretty, but like I would rather take an I would take an ugly win over a good loss every single day of the week. There's a lot of teams out there that like had really good losses, and that's cool and all. But I would rather win a game and figure it out next weekend and how to get better. And so that's kind of where we're at. And so get really getting excited, man. I really think we're about to we're, we're about to put it all together. Our defense is playing lights out. Yeah, moving on. We play NC State this weekend. Another big uh conference game. They're undefeated in the conference right now. And honestly, in our division, it's really always but us between them and us for the past couple of years. Like, like we're the only reason they don't play an AC championship for the most part the past couple of years. Really good team, really hostile atmosphere, which I'm excited about. I, I can't wait for like a really good road game. Like when people hate you, they might flip you a bird or two. 
you know, like the good stuff. Like the, you like you walk into the atmosphere, you're like, oh my gosh, this is these people do not like us at all. And it's like actually kind of like it's kind of fun, really fun. And yeah, just also on that same note, just this is my my last go round. I cannot come back for any more years. Super senior, I'm out. This is it. Um, and like this is my last time kind of going to a lot of different places. So I'm kind of just taking like that mental snapshot, just like trying to take a deep breath and do a warm up, soak it all in. But then when I'm playing, you just kind of, you don't really think about anything. You just kind of go and do your job. So yeah, you guys, next week we'll cover all things NC State. and We'll recap the game like we always do. Uh, but coming up next uh, for Wisconsin, the home of the Badgers, basically running back university, honestly. My good friend, my former teammate, Chaz Malusi. All right, so you guys, here are my guy Chez, uh, Chez Malusi, one of my former teammates who's doing big things up in Wisconsin. Uh, and it's really a good week to check in with my boy because they got a big game this weekend against the Notre Dame at Soldier Field. And so here he is. What up, Chez? What's good, man? How you doing? Good, bro. Good to see you, my dude. Uh, last time I seen him, I was actually up in Wisconsin during the summer. And he was telling me about possibly winning a job. And now he's won a job. You know what I'm saying? Every In every game we have... We've been playing later than they than they have the past couple of weeks, and so a lot of us try to watch a bunch of different games. Um, and throughout the college football world, and we all kind of tune in to the Wisconsin Badgers to support our dude. Been seeing them get literally fed every game. So, bro, how's it going? How you feel off top? Uh, great, man. I mean, it's a different experience, you know. Like you said, I get a lot of carries, <laughs> a lot different. So, you know, my body my body feels a little different than it usually does when I was there. Last week we had Kurt Herbstreit on. He talked about the transfer portal, and I was like, you know what? Well, one of my friends uh, transferred, and bro, you know how it goes. Like, there's some guys, and usually when you leave Clemson, the odds are definitely stacked against you. And you knew that. Like most guys that leave Clemson, it doesn't work out well for them. But you're a rare case of a, like, you know, what I'm saying you left, bro. I think you left on good terms, and you made a decision. What was it like? Like, why'd you? What, what was your decision to transfer? Just for the people, you know. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, it was definitely a really hard decision. I thought that being at Clemson did a lot of good and I, I learned a lot, but it was one of those things where like, I felt like as soon as I came in as a freshman with Travis there, you know, I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. And like, I think that experience kind of, kind of helped me in so many different ways. I didn't realize until I was a little older and you, you know, that for, sure. for being around me. <laughs> For the longest time, no. Like I learned, I learned, I learned so much during that time. So you know, that kind of, that kind of helped me kind of build, build myself obviously into the way I am now. So patience, and then honestly, it was a business decision because sure. we had a really, 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 deep really, room. yeah. Like I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like literally, literally, a really deep room, and you know, I feel like to a certain extent, how many of us could have really got the ball that many times you know I, I was I had a conversation after spring with my parents and I was just like I wouldn't be content getting the ball like five times four times as a junior and you know I felt like I had some decent film and I really just bet on myself that's the really that's the that, I'd say that was probably the biggest thing I was like if someone gives me an opportunity I feel like I could really just take it I know a lot of people, some badgers be watching this this podcast. Travis Etienne, uh, the all-time AC leading rusher, best running back in AC history is who he's referring to. So, yeah, definitely was a stack room. And you got the rest of us that were in there too. But, yeah, bro, what was it like? I think the biggest thing, everybody's always fascinated about the transfer portal. Like, what, how does it work? You know, because I, I don't know. I'm like, I'm, I know through y'all. Yeah. So, like, you tell your coach and then you go see yeah. who. Like, uh, I talked to – I mean, I, I called Coach Elliott about it first, you know, and then I – then I had a really long – I had a really good conversation with Coach Sweeney about it. And, you know, he, he supported me. I mean, he obviously, we had a, talk, talked about some things. But then after that, you talked to uh, – you talked to uh, Amanda Richardson. And the that compliance would be person. The, uh, compliance, yeah. That would be compliance. And then, yeah, from there, you're in the portal. And then that's like a I, – if I could describe it, it would be like high school recruiting, but a lot – a lot worse, only because, like, you know what's right and what's wrong. And, like, if a coach telling you something, you're like, ah, I kind of heard this before. Right. Like, so you kind of know the game a little bit. So, like, you kind of approach things a For lot sure. different. And you definitely, like, you're not the same 17, 18-year-old kid that's wide-eyed and just ready to, put, you know what I'm saying, put on exactly. a jersey. You kind of you kind of knew what you want, knew what you want to get into. Yeah. And so you already kind of hit on, like, getting recruited all right. over again. What was the what was the, the stupidest thing somebody asked you or, like, told you 
And then obviously Wisconsin probably told you the best stuff because you ended up there. But you don't name drop the person, but just give me like what's something you remember like 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 bro, you just lost me, you know? Uh I mean like I wouldn't say they came they came at me with like crazy things, but like it was one of those things where like some of the coaches that were recruiting me in the transfer portal, I didn't like like when they were trying to be way too buddy buddy, like like I was a seventeen, eighteen year old kid, like even though I am still young, I'm like I'm yeah. Still just for, for the record, Chez is like I, is I feel, super duper young. Um, he came. What you came in when you were freshman? You were seventeen. Yeah, which is yeah. norm. Like, norm. Yeah, normally not. You don't, you're like eighteen, nineteen. But go ahead. But but like I said, like I I I wasn't the young the young kid that was like oh like I need to call this coach. I want to talk to him. Like it was more so like this is business. Like I'm I'm coming to the, the next school I go to is literally because this is the place like I need to be and this is the place where I, I need to play. And like a lot of the coaches were like, like, what you doing, man? Like what you doing this weekend? Like those type of things. I'm like, like bro, I'm coach, like, <laughs> like, like, I'm, like coach, like I'm not, I'm not, you don't have to recruit. You don't have to recruit me. Like, like I, I, I'm going to decide the place I want to be based on like the depth chart, like the offense itself, like none of that, other, all the extra yeah. stuff that they do. So why, why Wisconsin? Uh, I mean, we run the ball a lot. Like that's like, like my first game I got I had my first game I had more carries than I had all last year. You did. There, Ind- indeed you did. So like, <laughs> <laughs> so like that kind of that that's kind of something I I took in the took into like obviously mine when I decided like that could happen if I go to the school and like in the last two games I've already had more carries than I did in my whole career there. <laughs> It is which is kind of crazy different different you know what i'm saying different like schemes different offenses is like um what else like I, was it just football did you like the like city you know what i'm saying or just like you keep it but i mean i, I came there i thought it was that was straight you know yeah i mean it's a lot different than Clemson. Right. like it, it's a city itself like there's water around the city like it's kind of nice nothing at all what i expected like wisconsin to be like I, you know i think of wisconsin you think of like I don't know, like snow and like yeah. cheese, cheese, curds. cheese. Like I don't know, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. So yeah, it's definitely really nice and like it's a city. So like you kind of have a a complete different like urban kind of like feel from it, but it gets cold. So I I have what really is something like that yet. you're a Florida boy, Fl- Florida native. You lived in a Clemson, which is deep south. What's something like about Wisconsin that might surprise some people, like from the south? Like I don't just anything off the top of your head. I mean. I don't know if it's surprised. I think it's a lot more diverse up here, though. Yeah. If, if that makes sense, I feel like be, being in the South, like I just feel like there's more variety of just people in general sure. in a big in a bigger city. What what makes Wisconsin such a good place for running backs? Obviously, run the ball, but what else? You know what I'm saying? Like, what else makes it what it is? Uh, definitely the O line. Okay. Uh, that that they're probably the hardest working position group on the team like just just from like a a outside of the outside of like the field standpoint they watch the most film like they do the the most extra stuff to be great because like that's kind of our mo is like having like a really good offensive line right so that's probably like tradition that's been passed down just and probably just different like different types of players like different schools recruit different type of guys like like what's the average height weight of a guy at wisconsin you know because probably different than clemson bro all I know is like when I'm in the huddle, like, and I'm not like I'm not the tallest dude, but I'm not short. Yeah, you like six like, foot, six one on a good day, you know. Yeah, like I'm, yeah, like I'm not short, like, but I'm talking about like I'm like this, like <laughs> they're all like I don't think I think the shortest offensive lineman we got is like six five, oh, and then wow. it, our tackles are our, our tackles six six and six five and six five and six, they all six five down the line. Are right, you play you play in the ACC? You played against SEC teams. What's the what's the difference in the Big Ten? Like, is it is there a noticeable difference in styles of play? Like, physically or just like just the style of the game? I'll say, tell me about style to play. Then maybe just like the the way of the land. Like, is football different there than it was at Clemson? Well, considering how we play controls a lot of the game, it kind of like because we run the ball a lot, right. so like. Only reason why I feel like it has been different for me is because we controlled the ball for like I think like forty minutes of the game, and like that's yeah, that's a long time. So the game was like really, oh really slow. And like where I was when I was at Clemson, like I remember the games being like, like 
touchdown, touchdown pass, touchdown pass. So like that's that's a big difference for right. me. It's just real slow. I talked about this on the previous episodes. Is it Clemson? You know the standard. Like we don't really focus on like like what Coach Twenty says goes as far as like what we can wear, and what we can't wear. <laughs> how how is the freedom been, my boy? You know what I'm saying? To you know what I'm saying? To let loose just a little bit. I saw the leg sleeve. You know, Coach Twenty is not going for that. So what like what what's the pregame? Or do you get the what do you what is your what's your pregame swag now? It's just so crazy. Like being, coming from like that like. You know, Coach. You know how Coach Trini is. You know, coming from like everyone's uniform, and like not that we're not uniform here, but like you can add your own, like kind of, you know, be you type of thing. Not not that you can be you there, but you know, there's a a little policy over there. So I mean, you know, I got my my thigh pads with like little custom things in them. I got, uh, yeah, I got. Uh, I get to spat my <laughs> cleats now, like. Yeah, I, it's a whole different wow. world. So I was just like, I'm, a, I'm, a, yeah, yeah, I'm that is. I'm over here jealous it, a little bit. Like it kind of brings you back to like when you was like a, a kid, and you could like, you know, bring your own little swag to the field. Yeah, different strokes for different folks. Uh, glad to see you. You know what I'm saying? Getting to get to have a little more swag though. All right, what's what's something you miss about Clemson? Or you think about Clemson football or just the fans in general? Give me some. What's the one thing you miss about Clemson? You, you're gonna laugh. Be watching, probably you know everyone saying? that knows me is gonna laugh at this, but the bistro. T- bro, people don't know about the bistro. I haven't talked about the bistro. The bistro. Yeah, on this podcast. All right, so I want you to tell people, but like in short, the bistro is our Clemson football dining hall, which is they always tell us y'all y'all no. don't know what y'all. Are. You know what I'm saying? You, you know what, Coach? He's like <laughs> y'all don't know what you don't know. Y'all got <laughs> yeah. it so good here. And so my man has left. Tell me, tell me man, what my experience is. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna be the one to say, you know how I used to be when I was there. Like, I would, bro. Chaz, Chaz is the pickiest, pickiest like, eater. I know. Yeah, one like, of one just, of the pickiest eaters. I didn't know how good I had. Like Coach Sweeney said, like he, he, you literally don't know. Like we don't even have a, a bistro for just football players. Like we have a, it's called training table, and it's for all of the sports. Like, it's for literally everyone. So, I mean, you don't get, like, I can't even, you don't get lobster rolls. You don't get, like, you don't get, you don't get nothing like that, man. You know, I'm telling you right now, like, I, I'll i be the one to say I took that for granted, for sure. Fair enough, my boy. All right, well, Paul Bistro. We'll have to do, like, another segment on Paul Bistro. It literally is the best. Clemson, they hook it up. Appreciate Give a little it. shout out to Hallie. You know what I'm saying? Our, our, our team chef, amazing person. Um, all right, what's one thing you appreciate about Wisconsin? Like being a, you know what I'm saying, you playing there. What's one thing you appreciate um, about Wisconsin? Just the kind of tradition that it has of just being a running back here. Uh, I think it carries a lot of weight. And, yeah, I mean, that kind of that kind of uh, speaks for it. I mean, it's kind of like a being a running back here is kind of compared to like being like a, like a quarterback at another school, if I'm being completely honest. Like, that's kind of how I feel. Right. What about, um, I guess, favorite thing about the fan base of Wisconsin? Or is there a difference between the fans at, at Clemson and Wisconsin? Like, or you think uh, it's kind of the same? I mean, I would say it's kind of the same, but I'm, have, I'm having a completely different experience here than I was than I, than I was <laughs> there. So, you know, I – not that I didn't have fans when right. I was at Clemson, but you know, like I said, it was just a lot, a lot different of an experience while I was there. All right, so you obviously you you were patient, you waited. What does it feel like to finally get that opportunity? You know, uh, there are probably a lot of you know what I'm saying like just a lot of kids from college football all around the world, like you know, so people wait and are patient. And how does it feel to finally get the opportunity? And not only get the opportunity, but to actually play. Yeah, well? I mean, uh, I would say, I mean, it obviously feels good, but it's just crazy because like. Not that I had, like, a crazy hard journey. Like, I was obviously at Clemson. It was, like, I was obviously in a great place. Like, I didn't take it for granted. But, like, you know, if, if anyone, like, I was in some, like, dark places when I was a freshman and sophomore kind of having to adjust to, like, literally, like, getting in the game for, like, one snap. And, like, that, that in a crazy way, like, it helped me in so many different ways. Like, one, humbling myself. And then, like, like you said, like, learning how to be patient and obviously I didn't like end up like having the role there, but like I found another way to figure out how that patience could pay off somewhere else. And I feel like anyone could really find that in their own way. What do you feel like Clemson prepared you for? Uh, 
I mean, life wise, a lot. Like one patience, you know, I definitely got humbled when I was there. You know, I was kind of used to being the dude and going there. There's, you know, there's dudes literally everywhere. Like I think the whole team. So, I mean, and, and that aspect <laughs> and then just football wise, you know, just the, the attention to detail that, that all the coaches kind of make you have, you know, it's not like that everywhere else. And I feel like that really helped me translate to coming here and like standing out, you know, just the habits that I had over there that they kind of like force you to like, you know, have, I came here and it was just like, force yeah, is like, a good word. I came here. And it was like nothing, nothing else. Like it was just like, I do this. Like I did that already. So it was just like, it was really easy. It was a really easy transition that Clemson prepared me for, honestly. And is there a difference in culture as far as like, like what is y'all's like mantra? Like obviously Clemson's all in. What is Wisconsin Badgers? Like what are y'all rallying? Uh, honestly, like the one thing I would say, it's a lot The just practice. Like I'm not going to lie, bro. Like we have like 28 period practices during season. Hell no. Like, <laughs> like bro, I'm what? not joking. Like, 28 periods. Is it? Is it? Is like? Is it 4:45? Like four minutes, 45 Bro, second periods. The periods don't. The periods. How, the how periods long, don't how long, have time. Like he, it's until we get done with that. Like that. Those amount of plays. Like and we can repeat those plays. Like, I'm, I'm, Bro, <laughs> like it's a lot different than what I was. It, you know, I'm talking about. Like I mean, like I said, Clemson was a lot faster. You know, we got through practice a lot faster because right. you know it was just boom, 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 and we huddle. So like. It practice is a lot, a lot slower. Like, and we hit a, we hit a lot more, a lot more. All right. So really, really quickly, I think something people would be interested in, in hearing is you could just hit on something. We talked about this. So different schools practice different ways. And so one of the things that like threw me for a loop when we were talking like during the summer was like Clemson. We practice in afternoons, but y'all practice like tell the people when, when do y'all practice? Yeah, I got practice at seven thirty tomorrow morning. Yeah, and that's just so foreign to me. So like. I'm like, bro, I wake up and go lift in the yeah. morning and I do school and then I go to, then I go to practice. So like you do practice first and y'all do film after that. Uh, right? Yeah. I mean, it depends on the day. Like tomorrow I'll have practice and then I'll lift and then I'll go. I don't have class tomorrow, but people will have class after uh, after uh, football practice and then we'll have meetings at five in the afternoon. Yeah. Different. And then what as far as like, how many days do y'all go full pads? Because like so at Clemson, we go Monday is like shells or like vest tuesday today was a full pass yeah. day wednesday we go like pretty much shells and then thursday is like walk through or like jog through yeah we do things a lot differently bro like <laughs> like monday and it, it, i mean game fall camp was a whole different story but like uh during like the season itself monday is a walkthrough like not even with spiders or anything like that it's just a walkthrough and, oh, wow. Yeah, and then Tuesday, pads. Wednesday, pads. Thursday is again a walkthrough, like nothing even like crazy. And then Friday is a spider practice, like a fast practice. Oh, that's different. So on Fridays we are. It would be know, like, so like it would be like, like, like it would be like it'd be a Thursday. It'd be a Thursday. There is our Friday. And all right, before we get into this last question, do you miss like the Chick Fil A after? You know what I'm saying. Like what? What is y'all's pregame uh, we, meals we, like? We, I, honestly, bro, like we get like our grab and go. Well, that's what they call it there. Here is just like food to go. Like our 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 food to go is like it's pretty good. And honestly, I ain't gonna lie, our pregame meal might be y'all's pregame meal. Mm, okay, it right, might, it just okay. might. All right, so this weekend, playing Notre Dame, uh, big big time game at Soldier Field, Fox, ESPN, everyone's gonna be there, bro. How do you stay cool for for a big big game like this? Obviously, in a big role you have now too. Uh, honestly, like kind of being there kind of helped in this as well. I mean, I didn't really get to play like I didn't get to have the role that I have now in those big games I was a part of. But like just being a part of the, those games and like seeing it and like practicing for them, I mean, it really helped in its own way. Like it it's football at the end of the day, and that's what I came to realize when right. I was there. Like and. I don't really – obviously, it's a big game, like, a lot on the line. But I don't really look at too much of that, especially in the role that I have now. Like, I know that I have to perform well, but at the end of the day, it is just football. And, you know, it's fun. Like, now football is really fun for me. Not that it wasn't fun there, yeah. but 
like I obviously didn't have the role that I wanted there. And now it's just like really fun. So I just go out there and try to have fun, honestly. Love to hear it, bro. All right. Well, it's been a good, you know what I'm saying? One of my favorite ones, honestly. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got my boy on. It's been cool to see my friends leave and go different schools, different fan bases now. So, bro, glad to have you on the show. I'll, I tell everybody to do this. Uh, tell the people why they should listen to the Players Club. That's what it's called. The Players Club Podcast. Why should they tune in? Why should they listen to me, bro? Give, get, give mean, the people anything you... Yeah, I mean, honestly, if people just want to be able to kind of just listen and get a sneak peek on, like, what college football is like and the different – just the different ways people kind of go through the experience. Because college football is really, like, in its own way, like, a, it's a really, really cool, weird, like, like crazy experience. Because, like, everyone has Indeed. their own own journey, their own, like, problems. like, And it's really cool for people to be able to share and kind of, like, learn from each other. Yeah, bro. Appreciate you for coming on. Good to see you, my dude. Best wishes as always. All right, you guys. want to thank my boy Chaz for coming on to the show. Um, as you can see, good dude. Wishing nothing but the best. Uh, especially this weekend against Notre Dame. Biggest game of his season so far. Uh, so hopefully he balls out and continues doing what he's been doing. But before we go, got to get into you guys' questions. My favorite part of the show. So starting off with Courtney from Long Island, New York. She says, what is the meaning behind the journey? And so first off, uh, some of you guys don't follow me on Instagram. Maybe you do. But that's kind of been like my tagline on all my posts since like 2017. And where it came from, uh, and really it's kind of been a way I've kind of, I guess, perspective, outlook on life uh, that I've kind of adopted. But it's the journey. I think everybody's on a journey. We're all going somewhere. And everything that's happening to you is all meant for you to like somehow progress and become who you're meant to be. So for me, like everything, the bad, the good, the ups and downs, everything in between, I've always kind of like, all right, it's, it's all about the journey. And everybody says like the destinations are cool, which they are. I think a lot of people live their life in a way where like they're always looking for the next thing or next place to go to. But really, life is really about the journey. So that's kind of how I've adopted like my outlook on life. It's like, you know what? Everything's about the journey. And so if you've been following me for a while, you know that about me. But if not, this is new news to you. But I think every, it's something everybody can, I feel like everybody can see or whatnot. But I feel like we're all going somewhere, we're all becoming something and the journey. Yeah. All right. Next question goes to my good friend, uh, Cornell Powell, former teammate. We're having like a big Clemson reunion on this podcast today. But uh, Kansas City, Missouri, answering this question. He says, do you think NIL has had a negative effect on the team? I think he just, he's, he, one, he definitely missed out on making some bread while he was here. You guys being able to make money, you guys are distracted. And I, I can be the first to tell you, it's really not the case. Like we, 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 we gonna pull together, but that's not the case of why things are happening the way they are. I think, I don't think it's had a negative effect at all. I think it's been, if anything, been a positive effect. I think it's been cool to see guys and myself like earn a little more while we're in school. And so just in short, like, I don't think it's had a negative effect, but I, I, that's my only my Clemson experience. I can't speak for everybody else. Like I, I definitely think it will have some type of negative effect on college sports because you're dealing with human beings but overall i think there's way more positives than negatives next question is my guy quez from anderson south carolina shout out to the home team um he said what's the biggest lesson you learned from struggling offensive lately the first thing is you really can't listen to too many outside voices because a lot of people don't know what's really going on all they see is what's not happening but they don't really know any of the context of why it's not happening and so when i watch the film after we haven't been performing to the standard and that's the biggest thing is like people expect us, which is a good thing at Clemson. They expect us to be at this level and we're going to get there and we we have everything we need to get there, but we haven't been. And so the biggest thing is just realizing like when adversity hits, two things happen. Either the people that are involved either grow closer apart or they get they get stronger together. And that's kind of what's been happening for us. And hopefully the world will take notice in the games to come. But like I feel like our team has gotten stronger, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Last question, my man, Steven from Atlanta. He says... What's the one thing that stands out at Clemson? And really, I just got to say the people. Like, if you come to Clemson, it's a small town. It ain't really too much going on around it. But, like, what makes Clemson what it is are the people. The people definitely make the place. Same thing with our football fans. Like, just it's a little old place. And just the, the people bring so much energy and excitement into this little town. So, I, I would say definitely that. And especially with our football program. Like, it's all about the people. Like, if you take away the people, man, this thing isn't isn't what, it's, what it is. Like, the people that are working here, the people that have been recruited here, the people that play here, make Clemson what it is. So I would definitely say, undoubtedly, the people. Uh, it's the special people at Clemson. So shout out to all special people watching this podcast that are from Clemson. Love you guys. 
truly Clemson family is a real thing. Yeah, thank you guys once again for sending in questions. We appreciate that so much. So just keep sending them in and I'm gonna keep answering them. And also want to thank my guest, uh, Chaz Malusi, my boy, uh, for coming on to the show. Uh, they play Notre Dame like we talked about. And so I wish them nothing but the best. And we'll talk about that game next weekend, but also our game is NC State that's coming up, another conference game. So we'll get into all that next time, next week. And guys, look, here we are once again. Like, subscribe, comment, all the above. But really, here, here's what I want to bring us in right now. We're on a road to a thousand subscribers. So come and be a part of this. Come along for the journey. It's going to be a good one because we would really believe we got a good thing going here, man. And I know you think that too. You're watching the show. And so let's keep it going. Uh, this has been episode four. I can't believe I've already done four episodes. So we've got a lot more coming, a lot more guests, a lot more stories to tell. All right. Thank you guys for listening. This has been the Players Club, a podcast about the players for the people. We'll see you next week.